Hello and welcome back to Global Sources Virtual Summit. To all of our paid attendees, welcome back. And this is live stream six. To all of you watching on the Global Sources social media channels, this is Virtual Summit, Global Sources Virtual Summit for, annual, uh, for online sellers. And we've been going since yesterday. This is a two day summit that is um, uh, for global Amazon and e-commerce sellers who want to source products from China and other countries in Asia. If you want to join us, there is still time to join the summit. Even though we've done um, a lot of the presentations have already been done, you can still get the replays of uh, the presentations that have been done. And more importantly, you can join our upcoming China sourcing workshop. Now, this is a very um, exclusive workshop that we are doing. This is the first time that such a workshop has ever been done in any conference. And you can get more information about this workshop at globalsources.com forward slash summit. And uh, the workshop is going to be held um, on uh, November 2nd, Thursday at um, 12 p.m. Pacific time. So that is November 13th, Friday in the morning, 4 a.m. Um, Hong Kong time. This is a six hour workshop that is going to be hosted by sourcing veteran Steven Selikoff. And he's going to be talking about a range of different topics to help you source more effectively, more profitably, more efficiently from China. He's going to be talking about things like how to select products, how to vet suppliers, how to make sure that uh, you get consistent quality from your suppliers, how to negotiate for better prices, better terms, better MOQs, how to negotiate if you're a woman, <laughs> apparently this different. And he's going to go in depth in a lot into a lot of different topics that will help you source more effectively from China. So definitely, definitely check out the workshop at globalsources.com forward slash summit. Uh, use the code win 2021 for 10 percent off. OK, so we have two presentations that we're, we're going to go through over here in this session. So first of all, we have one of our sponsors, Seller App, who's going to be coming in and doing a demo of their platform. And then we have a session by Zach Franklin from Seller.Deals. He's going to be talking about how you can generate external traffic from platforms like Google Shopping and Reddit to your e-commerce stores. So stick around for that. That is going to be a huge presentation. OK, so first of all, let me invite on screen Dilip Vamanan from Seller App. Hello, Dilip. Hey. Welcome back. Hey. Hi, Nikla. Good morning. How are you doing today? <laughs> I'm doing great. I've been going for six hours now, Dilip. So yeah, nice. I'm, I'm still nice. here. <laughs> yeah, I, I see actually a lot of messages out there in social media related to the event. I mean, I'm sure that you're having a great success right now. Yeah. Yeah, it's been amazing. I think there's just been so much interaction and engagement in all of the presentations that we've had. And, you know, some people have been up all night. Some people have woken up like 3 a.m. in the morning to attend the presentations because right. we've got a right. real global audience attending this. OK, fantastic. So first of all, Dilip, I want to thank Seller App for sponsoring Global Sources Virtual Summit and, you know, being a partner. So you were here yesterday and you did a great pres presentation talking about product research. But today we want to give you the opportunity to talk about your uh, your your program, your platform, Seller App. So take it away. Do you want to share your screen first? Yeah. Yep, yep. So again, uh, I'm actually back from my home office quarantine. So <laughs> let me <laughs> share my screen. Uh, perfect. OK, I believe uh, the screen should be live right now. Yeah. OK. So uh, what I thought is I'll actually just uh, start from where we left yesterday and then also go through the dashboard and all the major functionalities which we have right uh, so seller app is actually started around close to three and a half years back uh, with a mission of helping a million sellers with uh, different data um, and uh, see i mean as of now i mean i think seller app works with all different kinds of sellers starting from uh, a person who is just having an idea to all all the way up to an enterprise which is selling uh, tons of millions of dollars of revenue on Amazon per month, right? And uh, so which means that we are a platform which is which can make a difference for all different kinds of sellers, right? Starting from SMB to mid market to enterprise sellers. Uh, so this is where we left yesterday. We uh, we spoke a lot about uh, product research with a long term focus. So that's where everybody enter, right? Everybody enter with uh, with a the product. They start selling on a specific marketplace. 
and uh, then they grow from there right so this is where we left where we spoke a lot about beginner intermediate and advanced sellers and the kind of pain points they are having in terms of selecting the first product so uh, as a platform uh, we uh, currently work with uh, as i told you like different type of sellers including uh, the kind of sellers the different brands agencies and companies because we are essentially a data analytics startup and the data which we generate the data we kind of create all the forecasting and all the uh, estimations which we do what we have seen is essentially something which is useful for all different types which i mentioned here right and technically i think these are the functionalities right and again uh, depending on your phase of the journey you will look at in a different way like uh, you might be still looking for a product to sell which comes under the product intelligence so i'll, I'll briefly take you through the product uh, research feature then once you start selling the product you would like to essentially help you will require surely help in terms of your various sellability metrics which includes how is my product doing how is my competitor doing can i uh, improve my listing is my or keywords organically listed how is my ranking all those aspects of it right then uh, price optimization ad management which is a very very major thing because you know uh, how amazon ads have been exploding over the past 5 years right and finally comes to the the gross profit the gross margin which we spoke a lot yesterday right because profit finally all of us are actually selling on amazon because you wanted to generate more profit right so uh, we started at, uh, we had a humble beginning starting with amazon and uh, we uh, expanded to walmart and we are also in a process of expanding to all the different marketplaces across the world uh okay just uh, before getting into the demo what i wanted to say that is like to all the dear and near i, I mean attendees of this event we are having a special offer we are uh, so generally it's a 7 days trial so all of you guys will uh, can drop an email to gsacelerator.com i see many of you already emailed me yesterday uh, you can uh, drop an email to us on uh, gsacelerator.com and uh, this kinds of uh, gives you a 30 days of free access right or uh, you can also get into this website l.celerator.com/gs and register there and uh, again uh, we are also offering a free hour one hour of consultation for uh, uh, ba basically on anything related to amazon right it can be advertising listing or any other amazon related things so uh, let me go to the dashboard straight away and then come back to the presentation so we uh, as i told you like we are a, a single dashboard platform which means that all the different functionalities uh, the again uh, all the benefits for you are essentially kind of classified into four different buckets the first one is mostly related to your intelligence which means uh, the product research the keyword research all those functionalities comes under the uh, product intelligence then comes all your uh, profit related all your sales related functionalities which comes under your sales third one is essentially all your advertising related which which will be like uh looking at your campaigns looking at your uh, performance looking at your i mean optimizing those ads running automation under that all those comes under the advertising bucket and finally comes lot of monitoring and insights aspects right many of you um once you start scaling up your revenue and you have uh, let's say like you have thousands or 2000 uh, skus then managing uh, that many number of uh, different products under one place it's always going to be beneficial for you it not not only just saves your time it also improves the efficiency of your whole organization right so product intelligence sales advertising and finally comes the monitoring so this is how the whole suite is essentially designed and this is how the whole suite is essentially splitted and uh, organized in the ui right so uh, again let's go bit uh, drive deeper into each of these so this is the product uh, intelligence so once you start tracking a product which means that uh, you do a product research you identified a product and you can start tracking the product once you start tracking the product you will actually start getting all the benefits including uh, a product keyword which actually identifies all the set of keywords for your product keyword tracking is where you can actually start tracking the keywords uh, indexing helps you in terms of checking the indexing of the keyword and listing quality kinds of helps you in terms of understanding your current listing what are you doing good what are you not doing good 
all those aspects can actually be coming under the listing quality, right? Uh, the sales dashboard, it actually reports all your uh, revenue. It uh, it's also has this cute little functionality where you can set up your targets and you can monitor it on a daily basis. I mean, we have seen sellers doing it on, a, on an hourly basis where they track their sales and see how they are doing in terms of their monthly uh, targets, right? And again, uh, you can always dig deeper into this where you can go, uh, you can click on any product, you can go in depth and try to understand what are the various Amazon fees, where are you dragging the money, all those kind of things you can actually again go in depth. Uh, again, uh, inventory, I mean, I, I see a lot of discussion going on in the whole uh, Amazon ecosystem about inventory and uh, uh, why some, why maybe the marketplaces are not fair to them, unfair to them, all, all those. So we have this functionality, which is called inventory, uh, which also comes with the inventory forecasting, right? So again, uh, we do forecasting based on a lot of external parameters. We consider your sales velocity we consider the market conditions all those various factors and we kind of help you in terms of estimating or also forecasting the inventory so by the by the time when the q4 comes you don't need to run around thinking about the inventory this is something which can be planned in any quarters advertising um again uh, you get uh, this nice little, little bit dashboard with all your major uh, data related to all your campaigns uh, we also have built uh, insights on the top of it, which means uh, you can uh, understand. So this is something, this is an active account where the person takes action daily. So you don't see many negative keywords here, but what we have seen normally is like when you start connecting your account for the first time, you see a lot of data, you see a lot of keywords, which potentially might be draining a lot of money. And at the same point of time, there may be, sellers who are looking to scale right in that case functionalities like positive keywords uh keyword harvesting target improvement bid optimization identifying the competitors which are actually where you should advertise more all those functionalities is coming under the insights search term explorer it actually again uh, you have a, a functionality to essentially kind of search on the top of your data and uh, put various filters you can play around with it you can create different filters and then understand what's really really working for you right and uh, other than this i also wanted to take you uh, because i know there are a lot of uh, you folks who are starting off so uh, we briefly spoken yesterday about product ideas and product research so this is what i was saying so let's say like you have a specific niche in mind in that case, you can go here, you can select the category of your interest. Uh, and um, and then on a periodic basis, we actually create and curate and give you list of products for you, right? So the advantage here is it actually gives you much more in-depth information in terms of you can go in-depth about any product and understand why a particular product's opportunity is low or high or medium, right? and uh, the classic product research uh, which all of us have used some point of other where uh, we were searching we were identifying the product so product research gives you all those standard data formats like um, the sales estimation the orders the review tracking the the historical sales all those features comes under the product research uh, keyword tool, uh, I will say, uh, so we have worked last year, we have worked a lot on this, especially on the sales volume, as well as the conversion metrics, conversion tracking, uh, which means the conversion rate for each keyword, uh, because this is essentially a pain point for many, many sellers, right? And they find it very hard to understand the, uh, the search volumes. They also find it hard to find out the conversion rate for keywords, right? So, uh, keyword research we, here, we can act, you can actually select any keyword and it actually gives you the whole uh, database of results. Um, it gives you a nice summary and you can actually click on, uh, again, uh, when we uh, talked yesterday, we spoken about um, initial strategies when you launch, where you are trying to gain traction with the mid and long tail keywords, right? So here you have option to essentially sort it and it gives you all those various formats, right? And uh, other than this, yes, reverse as in uh, we have seen a lot of sellers effectively using it where you wanted to essentially 
uh, kind of uh, dig deeper into competition, understand what keywords are working, uh, all those aspects, right? So, uh, yes. Great. So I think uh, we are running short of time, but let me just take two more minutes of time, Mekla. <laughs> uh, yeah. So sure. I, I again, uh, I just quickly wanted to take you through uh, some of the use cases uh, which our sellers have found interesting in the past two years. Uh, we had we had uh, small to big sellers coming to our platform with this pain point of scaling the revenue, right? They're re generating a revenue, but they want to increase the revenue. So this can be one of your pain point. You might come to us uh, <laughs> thinking about the stocks inventory performance on the Q4. It might be expanding to a newer geographies of Amazon, or it might be maximizing the profit, right? As I told you yesterday, like we are currently working with uh, five of the four of the top 100 Amazon sellers, right? And uh, sometimes you also wanted to do a category audit and uh, generate various insights related to the category and insights. This can be the thing. Again, uh, as I told you, there are a lot of big sellers and big brands working with us. Yeah. So Mikla, how are we doing in terms of time? Yeah, we are out of time, Dilip. <laughs> okay. Sure. So, yeah. But I think that was a good overview of the platform. And I think it really gives people a good um, idea of what, you know, their capabilities are. And I'm going to, yeah, okay. So I'm, I'm actually running your offer at the bottom of the screen over here and the, and the link okay. as well. So yeah, definitely guys, check it out, seller app and take advantage of this offer that Dilip is giving to all of us. This is not only for paid attendees of the summit. This is for anybody watching. So go to l.sellerapp.com uh, forward slash GS and sign up for Seller App. You'll get a 30 day free trial and you're also going to get a one hour consultation call. So um, definitely take advantage of that. Well, Dilip, thank you so much for your time. And once again, thank you for uh, sponsoring and partnering with Global Sources Virtual Summit. You take yeah, care, Dilip. Bye. Have a good day. Yeah. Looking forward to all the great sessions today and tomorrow. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Okay, bye. Okay, awesome. So let's move on to the last session, the last presentation of this session. And I'm going to invite on stage my good friend, Zach Franklin, who is joining us from where in the world are you, Zach? Uh, I'm in Bangkok <laughs> right now. Um, still stuck here, but usually based out in Shenzhen. Awesome, awesome. It's good to see you. Okay, Zach, so what do you have for us today? Now, you're doing a lot of different things, and um, what are you going to talk to us mm -hmm. about today? Yeah, I currently have uh, more than 10 different projects running. Um, we're going to talk a lot about external marketing and basically how you can set this stuff up easily and focusing mostly on Google Shopping, a little bit of Reddit, and also going into deal sites and some fun stuff like that. Fantastic. Let's get started. Do you want to start sharing your screen? Yeah, so. let me figure out how to do this. <laughs> Mikala is saying hello, Zach. All Loved right. yesterday. So um, I can't see your name over here, Facebook user. So what you need to do is go to StreamYard.com forward slash Facebook and give StreamYard access to your profile so that we can see your name mm -hmm. over here when you post a comment. Okay, okay Megla, can, can you, yes, can you I see can. the 8020? Yes, there. OK. Mm -hmm. All right. I cannot see myself, but no problem. Yeah, um, I will keep an eye on the comments as well, Zach. And if there's anything relevant, I'll stop you. Otherwise, keep going and uh, we'll take questions at the end. All right. Sounds good. Um, this is a background of Hong Kong because we have do global sources in Hong Kong usually. I've been speaking, I think this is my fifth or sixth time. and. Yeah, so in the next 60 minutes, we're going to go over the 80-20 of external marketing for Amazon sellers. We're going to teach you guys how to flood your business with high quality traffic, how to rank effortlessly, and how to reach global domination. Okay, so we're going to do this mostly going over three things. So cracking the Google Shopping code. Uh, Google Shopping is basically better than ever, and it's a really easy way to kind of pump up your volume. Um, Reddit ads can be hit or miss for some sellers, but it can be really cheap really easy social traffic. Um, Reddit ads is about where Amazon ads was like almost in 2013. Um, clicks are very cheap. It's very easy to use and your customers are there. And then we're going to teach you guys how to blend affiliate and Amazon strategies so that you can rank very, very easily and very powerfully. 
Um, we have 60 slides. We have 60 minutes. So let's go. Um, so one sec. So I'm Zach Franklin. I've worked on more than 100 Amazon brands. My listings have had more than $100,000 daily sales. And one sec, let me mute this guy over here. I'm in a room with like a Japanese business guy. Um, okay, so I also founded Seller.Deals. So check it out if you want discounts on every Amazon software you can think of. We have currently more than 40 different uh, deal providers, including Helium 10, Jungle Scout, um, and pretty much every Amazon seller software and service you can think of. And we're adding 10 more every week. Uh, this is Jeff Bezos right now. Uh, Amazon has been very, very profitable. Perhaps it's most profitable ever during this pandemic. And while a lot of retail businesses are suffering, e-commerce is blowing up. Here's uh, Matt Silver, one of my friends out in New York, and he went from six-figure months to six-figure days, okay? He had more than $3 million in sales before a stock out on masks. And most sellers I know are up three to six X over last year. However, as we know, there's a lot of inventory issues. Um, but basically this is the moment for e-commerce, okay? We have a huge move of kind of going offline to online. And as those of us who have been online for a while, we're gonna have more competition than ever, but more customers than ever. So we need to keep taking action. We need to build moats. We need to build this long lasting competitive advantage. And surprisingly, one of the best ways to improve your Amazon performance is actually to expand beyond Amazon. Okay, so most people think, most Amazon sellers think this is marketing, okay? Mini chat, some PPC, Facebook ads, click funnels, but when I think marketing, this is what I see, okay? There's more than 8,000 different marketing tools out there, tons and tons of different traffic sources. And if you're only using these four, you're leaving a lot of money on the table, okay? And this is because Facebook used to be a really good starting point, but it's not a good starting point anymore, okay? We used to have all of this buyer data Okay, we used to even know who our customers were, their name, their address, and we used to be able to create custom audiences and lookalikes from our actual customers. And this um, was really an amazing way to get started using Facebook ads. Cold traffic Facebook ads can be very, very expensive. And in general, they don't work well with the types of products a lot of Amazon sellers are selling uh, versus Google which I think, and after using it much more extensively this year, um, is a much better place for most sellers to get started, especially with Google Shopping, okay? Google Shopping is very set and forget. I have a lot of campaigns that have been running for basically the entire year, um, and I haven't had to change almost anything, okay? I go in maybe once a week, add some negative keywords, maybe adjust some bids, and this is the most work I need to do on it for a year. Okay, clicks can be really cheap. I have a lot of campaigns going um, between five and 10 cents per click. And it can go as high as about 60. It's more similar to what you already know with Amazon PPC. Okay, Amazon PPC skills are very, very transferable. Once, and, once and again, it's less touchy than a lot of these other ad platforms. Okay, with Facebook, you need to constantly make new creatives. You need to um, create new audiences. You have to moderate the comments. You have to do all this stuff. Um, Google also works very, very well with boring products, okay? Trash bags work well, can openers, garlic presses, etc. okay? You also don't need to design creatives and you can expand to countries that are not currently on Amazon, okay? Google works with, I think, more than 100 countries at this point, uh, just on Google Shopping, and Google AdWords is basically everywhere you can be. 
Google is also adding in some free listings, okay? Some organic listings for Google Shopping. And this is amazing. So if you don't create your Merchant Center account and upload your products, you are missing out on some really good potential free traffic because as we can see, we have hundreds of millions of shopping searches on Google every single day. Um, your customers are here and this is where you should be. Okay, what you need to get started? Um, you just need three things, a Shopify site. Uh, most of us are using Shopify. If you're using WooCommerce or something like that, you can also do it, but you do need to have your own website. You cannot really send this straight to Amazon. Um, you need a Google Merchant Center account. So you just Google Merchant Center and then you can set it up and a Google ad account, which a lot of us do have. We need to tie it all together. So we use something called uh, feed for Google Shopping by a company called Symprosis out of India, and they are phenomenal, okay? This one app takes away all of the pain that used to come with setting up Google Shopping. You know, it creates your conversion tracking, it creates your feed, it updates your feed every day, and it provides a lot of different options for you. Um, one other thing you need to do is you need to have an understanding of all of the ad policies. If you get your Google Merchant Center shut down, it's not fun. Okay, it's a lot easier to deal with than an Amazon shutdown, but you do want to make sure that you know what you're doing and that everything matches up. Uh, these are things like having a return policy on your website, um, accurate shipping times, uh, stuff like this. So once you are able to get your products online, you're gonna see something like this. It'll show you, um, you know, if things are active, if items have problems, and it will tell you everything, right? Like you can see here, um, some of my titles are too long, so it cuts them down. Um, it can tell you if you're missing like uh, a SKU or a UPC that it might have uh, some limited impressions. So you basically just go through this and for Merchant Center, you wanna just click around everywhere. So Google is a lot like Amazon in that you need to provide them uh, data, okay? Google and Amazon are search engines that use what you give um, to optimize your stuff. So it's actually not different from Amazon SEO, okay? You know how to optimize your product title, how to optimize description, product tags are actually very important, your SKU, your category, and you can use different keywords than Amazon because Amazon is going to do, um, you know, it's a different search engine. And what happens, you can usually tell if Google doesn't know what your product is because you're gonna get a ton of random, super random keywords in your search. And then usually once you fix it, um, that works. And once you Google knows what your UPC is, they will be able to send good traffic for it. Okay, optimizing your feed is very easy. Add your keywords to your title. Make sure every product has a full SEO description set your product category for Google Shopping, um, make sure that your product tags on the Shopify fit with kind of the Google search filters, add your SKU, add your UPC, add the brand name. The images are very important and you can also use custom labels in order to organize everything. Okay, so going into how do you actually set up a campaign? So, on the left, we have what most people do, and this is why they, they fail at Google Shopping, and at the right is what you need to be doing, okay? If you create one Google Shopping campaign for all your products at one bid, what's gonna happen is you're gonna be bidding incorrectly on different search queries, okay? You're gonna be spending not enough money on the high converting ones. You're gonna be spending too much money on uh, poor performing keywords. So you need to create kind of what I call campaign stacks. So with this, you have priority levels. Okay, Google Shopping has priority levels. This is something that Amazon doesn't have, so it's something you need to really pay attention to, okay? So you can select campaign priorities, low, medium, or high. And the way it works is it basically flows through. So um, if you have a high campaign, it will show first, and then if you have a medium campaign, it will flow through to that, and then finally to low. And so what you do here is you basically use priority levels 
a negative keywords and a shared budget so that you can have a low bid campaign, okay, where you are um, segmenting out kind of irrelevant keywords because Google is deciding your keywords, okay? You don't decide your keywords for Google Shopping. You can only use negative keywords, okay? So with this um, is how I basically have most of my campaign set up where I have a generic campaign. And with this, I keep the bid around five cents at the high priority level. So that means every keyword is basically going to be there. So then I take the keywords I want to bid on and I make these into a, a keyword list and I subtract that, I use the negative list on that first campaign. So that means only the keywords I want to target are going to show up on this medium higher bid campaign with a medium priority level, okay? These are very easy to find in your shared library, okay? The shared budget and the negative keyword lists. So once again, I know it's a little bit confusing. We need to use negative keywords in order to show Google our positive keywords. So if we have like two campaigns set up and we want to bid on the word coffee grinder for our lower bid and higher priority campaign, we would negative match the word coffee grinder, okay? For our medium bid, medium priority campaign, which is where we want coffee grinder to show, it will show up here because it's negative matched already on the high priority campaign. So this is how you can control where you want your keywords to show up. Um, negative keywords are a really easy way to kind of keep everything organized and to apply uh, your negative keywords to new campaigns. So I like to start by creating these type of lists. So I have generic uh, negatives. So these are things like used, eBay, manual, warranty, near me, things that are just going to be very irrelevant or they're looking for something else. Um, for search information, okay, I don't like uh, people that are just looking for information. I want people that are more ready to buy. And so I have them searching, you know, a negative keyword list for question words. And when I do this, I'm able to immediately cut out uh, 50 to 60% of non-converting traffic. Okay, then you create kind of product specific and brand specific negative lists. And you just update these basically every week. Okay. Um, yeah, one sec. So where do you actually send them? Okay, on your landing page, how do you make more money? Um, and I like to add Amazon buttons. Okay, I like to have it where it's easy to buy with Amazon if they want to go because I've tested this quite a bit and we have many shoppers up to 50% in a lot of my tests actually want to buy with Amazon, okay? So we make it really easy. We put a buy on Amazon button and you can use a lot of different links here. You can use an affiliate link. You can use a deep link. You can use your Amazon attribution link, okay? All of these are valid options. And another thing I like to put site wide is to have an exit pop up uh, when they're about to leave the site asking, do they want to buy on Amazon? And you can provide like a 5%, 10% gift card or a discount for uh, giving your email, okay? You can track this by using Google Tag Manager, okay? Um, if you are using Google Tag Manager, you are able to track every single thing that's happening on your website very, very easily, okay? You're able to track things like, um, did they scroll all the way down the page? How long did they spend on your website? And all of the button clicks on a website. If you ever wanted to know how do you track different button clicks, like if they're tracking um, like a go to Amazon button on your page, you just use Google Tag Manager, use show button or click button as the trigger, and then it will fire your conversion event, okay? This is absolutely huge. A lot of the spillover traffic to Amazon is big for the rank. You can also use like the Twitter or the social links. Um, Amazon really loves this. So running Google Shopping for Amazon sellers has had really large effects on kind of product ranking. Okay, there's so much spillover effect that I know some Indian sellers selling shampoo 
that were able to rank number one on Amazon just from the spillover traffic. Okay, there's still a little bit more tricks you need to know for Google Shopping, and most of them are found in Merchant Center, okay? So if you go to kind of manage programs under growth, you have a lot of different data. You have, um, you know, if you want to sell your products for free, uh, this is where you enable that free traffic from Google. Um, if you want to make it so people can check out directly through Google, they don't even know to your, go to your website, you can set that up here. Dynamic retargeting, customer reviews, um, Google will actually chase your customers for reviews, and this is huge. Um, there's also a lot of data in here about the competition, okay? So you're able to see, um, you know, which products are selling the best in each category, and are they trending up, trending down, So, and also for different keywords. So this is absolutely huge um, also for your Amazon product research. Okay, um, another one of my favorite hacks to kind of stand out because there's not a lot you can do to actually stand out in the search feed. Um, but what you can do is you add something called a promotion feed. So this adds more and more data. Uh, for example, um, here's what it's like for, I think like um, a Bluetooth headphone or something like that. So you can see the different stores selling it and luckily you're gonna be the only one selling your private label product, so you're not gonna deal with this. Um, I sell a lot of high ticket products, so I have a lot of people selling the same stuff. Um, if they only say free shipping, which is the default kind of promotion, they're missing a lot of traffic because customers have questions, right? Like when is the item going to get there? Um, and so here by actually putting a date, um, even if they have a higher price, customers that care about when the product is going to get there is probably going to go to that listing. Um, you can get very, very creative with this. I like to add things like um, I give free wine decanters when they buy a wine refrigerator. It costs me about $10, and I'm much more likely to get a sale because it really stands out in the search results. Okay, a lot of us are also located outside the U.S., and for a while I was really wondering um, how I can actually see my competition and see their ads because you can't just set your, your country or like set the zip code like you do on Amazon. So you need to have a VPN. Um, I recommend ExpressVPN and you need a special browser, okay? You can't just use Chrome for this. You need to use something called Epic Privacy Browser and that hides basically everything going on. Um, so it hides your, um, your country, it hides every piece of data about your browser, okay? So this is really, really good, and you're able to actually see um, the competition in the country that you're selling to, and wherever you are, you know, you can be, you can make it look like you're in Albania, you can make it look like you're in Canada, it's gonna work. Um, don't forget, if you are sending a lot of traffic, um, retargeting is also where a lot of money is made. AdWords has so many different retargeting options, okay? You have display, you have Gmail, you have YouTube. There are a lot of different ways to do this. Okay, so I hope that this gives you just an idea of how to succeed on Google Shopping. If you do this right, it's like taking anabolic steroids for your sales. And if you're still confused, don't worry, just dive in, get started. It will make sense, it will make sales, okay? Um, a lot of us, read a lot of these kind of business books and a lot of us have seen this story that goes around about an art teacher teaching pottery who split the class into two groups, right? You had a group that was told to make as many pots as possible and then you had one group that was told make the perfect pot, okay? The group that, you know, just made a ton of pots every day made the better pots instead of the group that just sat there all day focusing learning thinking how to make the best one okay quantity leads to quality okay if you can be prolific if you can output more campaigns if you spend more time on this you will get better than someone just thinking about it okay 
So my advice to you is to make three advertising campaigns, whether it's on Google, whether it's on Amazon, whether it's on Facebook, but make these every day and then you don't feel bad about killing a campaign every day, okay? Make three ad campaigns every single day and you will improve very, very fast, okay? So this starts leading us into other types of traffic platforms, okay? What else can we do to increase our traffic? If you have done Facebook, if so you have done Google, if you have done Amazon. Zach. Yeah. Okay, one so Mabel is asking, do you recommend both Google ad and Amazon ads to improve conversion rate based on a financial point of view? Amazon loves external traffic. Yeah, you should, um, basically what you can do with Google ads is you can do it very low cost. Um, so you can set up like a $5, $10 campaign if you want. Um, you don't need to go hard and, and be spending hundreds of dollars a day. But what it's going to do is you're getting so much traffic for very, very cheap because still a lot of your competition is not using this. Um, you are able to get sense for whatever bid you, you do it for. You know, I'm able to get hundreds and hundreds of clicks at five cents a piece. And that's amazing because on, on Amazon, you know, you still, even if it's not a super competitive niche, you might be getting like $3 clicks now. Um, so it's going to work much, much better. The spillover effect is real. Um, and you're going to get a lot more people kind of engaged with your brand. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that it improves conversion rate because sometimes people are, you're going to have more people just browsing too. Um, your conversion rate is going to be based on what type of traffic you're sending, right? If you are sending keywords that are people just kind of very not so interested. It, it doesn't work quite as well. One thing I do, I have a campaign set up just for the SKU of the products um, because I'm selling a lot of very, very, very expensive stuff. Um, and I got a, a $5,500 order last week on $1 daily spend on this brand. $1 daily spend, I got a $5,500 order because I just marketed the SKUs, okay? Mm -hmm. Um, it's, okay. but these are, are products that a lot of people are selling and they're kind of in demand and for Amazon sellers, it's not as good to do the SKUs because no one knows your SKUs. Um, you're not like a, a big brand. I work with brands and I'm like their reseller retailer. Um, but I do recommend just creating at least like a five or $10 a day Google campaign and just see what happens. It can work out really, really well, and it's worth experimenting with. Okay, so I'm going to put your slides back on the screen, and okay. uh, you can go ahead and switch to your presentation. Okay. Yeah, it's weird not seeing an audience. You know, I'm still haven't yeah. gotten used to these. Um, you know, I'm just staring at my computer in a room kind of thing. We're here. Yeah, <laughs> we can see you. Hope so. Um, versus like you know hundreds of thousands of people. But basically, the important thing is you're actually learning all of these very valuable skills as an Amazon seller that you can use for almost any other kind of online business. Um, and this is a really powerful thing, okay? So if you want to use these other ad platforms like Google or Reddit or Facebook, they're not so different than Amazon PPC, okay? They're all very, very similar. So one thing about Reddit um, is it's the sixth biggest social network, okay? We have more than 430 million hits per month to Reddit. It can be a huge traffic source. But the issue is that like Redditors are really anti-advertising and advertising works closer to Facebook than to Google on Reddit because it's a social platform. But think of it like basically Facebook groups on steroids. Um, if we look at the fulfillment by Amazon subreddit, subreddit is basically like, think of like a Facebook group or just a community. So you have 65,000 members that are all very targeted Amazon sellers. But let's say we're selling stuff like woodworking 
okay? They have a community for woodworking with 2.5 million people. If you're selling a gardening product, they have 3.2 million people. And this is just in the one community, not even all the other communities around this. If you're selling like Nintendo Switch accessories, the Reddit has 2.5 million members, okay, that have all said, I'm interested in this, I'm joining this. So this can be an absolutely huge channel because there are so many different communities for basically anything that your product can do. Uh, go to ads.reddit.com right now. It's very easy to set up an account. Once again, you need to use Google Tag Manager so that you can track, okay? You need to track page visits and you need to set track either leads if you're sending them to Amazon or purchases on your website, okay? It takes about five to 10 minutes to track and you can learn how to do this on YouTube or I'll be making a blog post on seller.deals, okay? Clicks can be really, really cheap. Um, I've been running ads for about three or four months on Reddit. I average about 20 cents per click, which is probably better than what you guys are doing on Amazon. And I didn't touch my ads for three months. I set it up in five minutes and I walked away and it brings results and I'm not doing anything, okay? If you have a large subreddit, you can just let it run because you have so many people. You're not gonna have very high frequency, okay? Um, once again, going back to Reddit being very anti-advertising, um, what you want to do is come up with things that are not just straight sale, okay? Because if you're just trying to straight sell people on Reddit, they don't like it. But if you can make a story angle, that's a little bit better. Uh, other things you can do if you are doing kind of sales, people like kind of a reason for a sale. They like deals, they like launches. Um, they like information and article type things. Giveaways work very, very well for this. There's also a Reddit for giveaways, like subreddit, and this can work very, very well to get some initial traffic to something like a Gleam giveaway. I like to do quizzes, uh, works very well on Reddit as well, and also affiliate listicles where you run an Amazon affiliate listicle where maybe you have a couple products in there and you also are sending traffic to your competitors, right? Product comparisons. So here's an example of kind of a sale ad that works pretty well. Um, you notice the guy actually has his, his face, okay? Reddit is about people and it's a social network. They want kind of authenticity in their, their sales pitches, okay? so. This works where it's a person saying, hey, I made this, do you want it, what you get, how it works, want in. Reddit has very like casual language. You don't want to use very like corporate sounding language. Um, you know, it's very simple what you get, how it works, uh, do you want it? Um, be very simple like this and don't kind of sell them too hard. Um, Another thing, it can work really, re really well for B2B. You can add pictures, um, but discounts work really well. Straight sale doesn't work quite as well. Um, you can also notice here that they have comments and also upvotes. So this is, this is just like likes, comments, and shares um, on Facebook, and you want to kind of manipulate these. Okay, you want to get upvotes on your, friend, on your ads. You want to send your ads to other people to upvote them. Okay, you also want to use the, the first comment to add way more detail, and you want to get other people to comment. Okay, show the engagement and show that this is like a trusted company. So like here is something I did for seller deals, right? It ended up working really well. It drove about um, more than 100 deal clicks on seller.deals. So, we negotiate exclusive deals on software and services for Amazon sellers, pass them on to you. We're adding 10 new deals every week. Most of our deals are lifetime discounts off of the monthly price, free to use, nothing to sign up. Just click the deal you want, save some money. We also have a Facebook group, okay? So software deals, we just list all of the different links to a lot of our deals and make it very easy for people to get what they want. So for something like your website, you could, put the Amazon link there as well. <clears throat> you could put 
your about page or like your story. Um, you want to provide them with as much information as possible, even like their return policy or YouTube, something to make it look like you guys are real and there's a lot more to do. Okay, so I also like to use this strategy on my Facebook comments is, you know, if I put an offer out there, I like to have a list of basically everything they can do. Okay, any questions about Reddit? No, I think we're good. No questions so far. All right. So we're going into part three. Let me check my time. I'm doing pretty good. Yeah. All right. So ranking is continually to evolve on Amazon. Okay. And we talked a little bit about Google. We talked a little bit about Reddit, but there's an even more kind of advanced thing that we can do, which is building our own distribution. Okay. Smart Amazon sellers are building huge Facebook groups, content sites, affiliate sites, and deal sites. Okay. So these can kind of be rank machines where you can rank any product and flood Amazon with traffic and sales. Okay. So this is different than just social media where it's that one way communication. These are distribution, not just for yourself, but also for other brands like you. Okay. Ranking can be very easy because sales solve all your problems. Okay. The more traffic and more sales on different keywords than your competitors, you're going to be on page one. Okay. Ranking with social can still be pretty easy. We have Rad Hot Beauty, um, one of the biggest beauty sellers on Amazon. Her posts were super simple. You can see this giveaway post got like 500 likes organically, but here's what happened immediately in less than two days, she went to number one and started to get reviews. Her listing, most of us would think looks like shit. Okay. She doesn't have any lifestyle images. She has four star reviews, 13 reviews. Um, she has no like about the product, no A plus content and she's the best seller. Okay. When you are really good at off Amazon, you don't need to be as good at Amazon. And now we look at, at where the listings are now, we can see 7,000 reviews, 9,000 reviews, thousand reviews, 5,000, 18,000. This is a monster on Amazon, multi, multi-million dollar business from this. Okay. From using social channels and basically, you know, doing giveaways, doing traffic, this strategy works if you really want to get ahead on Amazon. But I think that even though she made millions, she left so much money on the table. Okay. She didn't do any kind of joint ventures or affiliate relationships. Right. So like where customers spend their money says so much about them and you're able to partner with other brands that have things your audience needs. Okay. And promote them to each other's audiences. Okay. Info products do this all the time, but a lot of e-com companies don't do it. You know, they want to protect their brand, but I think that they're missing out. I think that they need to provide solutions for their audience and they can do this um, by providing someone else's product. Okay. They can become affiliates. So, where people spend their money says a lot about them, right? If they buy a chef's knife, they probably want to be a great cook. If they're buying dog treats, they care about their pets. They have other needs, right? The people that buy stuff for their pets need all kinds of stuff. So what else do, do your customers need? And a lot of us, because we're selling on stuff like Amazon US where it's so competitive, we're selling very, very niche products, okay? If you're selling an Amazon or an Apple lightning cable, um, instead you want to make a social media community or deal site or something about Apple or technology. So that instead of just promoting the lightning cables, you can promote, um, basically everything else that they do. You can promote apps, you can promote all this stuff and make more money. If you're selling chef's knives, it's better to have like an entire cooking website. Okay. You want to have more room to promote multiple items and attract a bigger audience than just focusing so much on your niche. 
Okay. So this is a company I used to work with um, because I worked for Value Link, which owned these guys. Um, and basically we acquired them just so that we could launch products. Okay. We had 300,000 hits a month from shoppers that wanted deals. Okay. I think deals are very, very, very powerful. So Value Link fueled this growth because they let other people, other sellers, uh, pay to place deals. Then they use this money for ads so that they can get more and more shoppers. Okay, just like Amazon. When Value Link launched a new product, all they needed to do is put it at the top of the, the site, and immediately they would get thousands of sales a day, and they would rank instantly. Okay, rinse and repeat, 3,000 products every year, for millions and millions in sales, Value Link was able to get more than three hundred million dollars in sales a year because of this. And this was their biggest moat that made them one of the biggest top five uh, Chinese Amazon sellers because no one else had this type of competitive edge. They couldn't replicate this. Okay, so what's really unique here is they embraced their competitors and gave them a sales channel. Okay, this is a huge strategic shift for most sellers. You don't want to make things just about your brand. You want to make it bigger than that. Okay, if you look at a lot of podcasts, even the ones with very, very interesting hosts, the majority bring on other guests to provide new and engaging content. Or look at a conference like this. Okay, the guests also bring their own audience to a podcast or to a platform. So this is one of my friends, his name is Mike, and here he's Sarah Martinez, and he decided to try and rank his band. Could he sell out his shows in Utah um, by using marketing strategy? Right. So he made an article, five insanely talented Utah bands destined to make national headlines in 2020 on Medium, and he blasted Facebook ads to it for Salt Lake City. Okay, what he did with this, his band was number one on the list, but then he promoted four other bands. And these four other bands shared it with their audience that was a similar fit for um, Spirit Machines. And then they were able to basically sell out their shows. Um, this way, it didn't look like they were trying to promote because it looked like someone else was doing it for them. Okay, so ways to do it before you maybe build, jump out and build a deal site or something like that, you can look into partnerships. You can potentially white label an existing deal or coupon site. Can you use or partner with groups or existing sites? And can you find a way to actually get paid by other brands and do kind of joint promotions? Another thing you can do is you can kind of buy these deal sites. Um, so content sites, Facebook groups are really good strategic acquisitions. Um, they can provide steady traffic for you. They can also increase your kind of uh, multiple when you do sell. Facebook groups are really undervalued by most of their owners because a lot of these people are doing it as a hobby and not a business. Um, so it's actually quite easy, especially right now, to ethically acquire these kind of Facebook groups. Um, Empire Flippers is also a great place to check for kind of these affiliate sites and content sites that can complement your business. So Amazon is getting more competitive. We've all seen that. You're going to need to focus on building more long-term assets off of Amazon that can continue to drive traffic and sales at will. That and the best way to do it is not just maybe social media or email. You want to create kind of a much more complex community where you are promoting multiple things, okay? More of an authority site. And this is going to become a huge advantage for you on Amazon that no one can compete with. And if you don't do this, someone else is going to, okay? If you want to watch me grow a deal site, check it out, seller.deals. We have deals on basically everything you're using as an Amazon seller. And if you want uh, specific deals that are not there yet, you can reach out to us and we will try and track them down and negotiate something, okay? So get in touch, seller.deals slash GSS 2020. Okay, you can download the slides. I know I went through this a little bit fast. Uh, we have links to a lot of other resources. We have um, 
a lot of blog posts and virtual events. We do virtual events now every week. The next one is tomorrow night. So you can actually come and join live with a bunch of Amazon sellers in a bunch of small little chat rooms. And it's really cool. Um, we have exclusive deals. These are lifetime deals on Amazon software and services. You are able to cut your expenses in half and tons of other free Amazon hacks and content. We are just getting started with seller deals. Okay, so thank you very much for joining, spending your time with me today and coming back for Global Sources. Thank you so much, Zach. Okay, that was a lot of uh, information over there. Um, so let's see if we have any questions. Um, okay, Payment is saying, hey, Zach, what's up, buddy? What, kind of mm -hmm. what kinds of categories of products have you seen perform better in general on Reddit? Yeah, hey, man, um, whatever, basically the bigger and you want kind of subreddits that are very focused, um, but also very big, right? Like if they have more than a kind of a million people or 500,000 people, but they're a focused community, it can be very big. And I mostly do kind of B2B services on there, but I've done a lot of products as well. And the ones like, for example, electronics accessories work really, really well, but also if you have generic uh, type of products that can fit anything you can do kind of pretty broad campaigns. It's just cheap in general for the traffic um, So it's not going to be maybe the best converting traffic, but your uh, Costs can be so low that it almost doesn't matter right. Hey today is 11 11 or 1 1 1 1 <laughs> should be a oh, huge shit. I gotta buy something right? I gotta buy a lot of stuff <laughs> Yeah, so let's see what happens in China with 11.11 and um, I think Lazada and Q10 also have quite a few deals going on. Yeah, so. I'm opening up Lazada right now. Yeah. What do you think is happening with live streaming, Zach? And, you know, of course, uh, live streaming uh -huh. e-commerce is very popular in China. It's getting more popular here in Singapore. I see Lazada, Shopee doing more of live streams. but. What about mm -hmm. Amazon and in the U.S. and what's well? What Amazon sort of is there? doing more live streaming, and you know anyone that does something early is going to reap the benefits. Uh, like when Facebook Live started, um, they would push your your stuff everywhere um, just for doing a live, and now when you do a live, maybe not quite as much. Um, so Amazon is doing live streaming. I would try it out, but you know. You really don't know. I've, there are a couple of really good categories this works in. I've seen um, a lot of toy review for kids um, absolutely blow it up. They do like a once a week live stream where they go over all the latest toys and they just sell everything. Is and, it Facebook or? Uh, yeah, I think it's Facebook and YouTube and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Just kind of omni-channel. I think that live streaming has a lot of benefits because people want to be there live, okay? People don't want to just consume content anymore, especially like we've had months of sitting on our couch and watching Netflix. We want to be like a part of an experience and live streaming is, you know, better for that because people can, you know, reach out and say like, oh, hey, I see you. And that's something that you never get just watching a YouTube video. You know, I remember maybe five, six years ago or something, um, watching one of my favorite marketers do live streams every day for like morning coffee. And every day I'd be like, hey, Malin, what up? And he'd be like, hey, Zach. And I'd be like, wow, that that's super cool. Um, and probably if it wasn't for live streaming, I probably wouldn't do marketing at the level I'm doing it now because um, me and like some of the other audience members, um, like, hey, let's meet up. And we made like a group and we made like a mastermind group and we became much better affiliate marketers because we were watching the same stuff and in the comments worked it out. And uh, that, was, that was huge. You know, I met most of those people that um, created a, a mastermind from watching a live stream. Do you have two monitors, Zach? Because you're looking that side, and you're, yes. I think your camera is uh, you, here. So you are on the big one. My screen is here. <laughs> so you should look this side. Yeah, look at, the, look at the camera. That's better. Okay, uh, there. Yeah, move it. 
Okay, awesome. And what do you think about some of the other platforms like, you know, Pinterest or um, Pinterest is Instagram. awesome because once mm -hmm. you like do your ad, the ad stays there. Mm -hmm. And that's always like, you know, a great use of your kind of ROI. You mm -hmm. Pinterest like because it's also very search based and it's not like a news feed style. If you can really dominate particular keywords or particular searches, um, your stuff can do well very long, long term. Um, I bought a website uh, basically selling toolboxes and tool cabinets uh, about a year ago. It gets about 100 hits a day from Pinterest, and I've never touched the Pinterest, right? From like something that other people set up like two, three years ago, um, it still works every day. Um, all right, so we got TikTok. Yeah, how about TikTok for so Amazon? I love TikTok. I'm, I'm hooked on TikTok, and I'm more hooked on like Douyin. But the thing about TikTok, it's really hard to make a six second video. Like, it's really easy to make an hour video, and it's really hard to like condense it down to like a six second thing. The other thing is, it needs to be really, really interesting. Okay, you are competing against like, very professional people at holding your attention for six seconds. If your product is not visually interesting, super unique, um, you know, and kind of fits the demographics of TikTok, it's going to be very difficult to promote it, right? Like, let's say you're promoting something boring like a computer mouse. Um, good luck. Like, <laughs> you're competing against like bikini models and like, crazy science experiments and like super funny stuff. If you are selling like a normal type product, normal people use, um, Google is a good option because boring stuff works there, right? So it's about knowing your products and knowing like, is my thing really engaging and visually interesting? Is it gonna make good for social media because it has that kind of emotional reaction? Or is it something like, oh, I need it, I'll go pick it up at the store or something like a normal, type of boring product, which works really well on Google, really well on Amazon, but not as well on kind of the social media stuff. Okay, cool. So guys, yeah, if you have any more questions for Zach, post them in the comments mm -hmm. now and uh, we'll start wrapping up over here. Okay, yep, so Payman says good. suggestions for Megla for next GSS, maybe have a talk on using TikTok for Amazon e-commerce. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Yeah, you, you can talk with uh, Anthony Lee. He's been doing a lot of TikTok stuff for his own kind of marketing. Mm -hmm. I don't know too many people doing products that are not like, I don't know, bikinis or like rave gear, or like something like visual. Um, but TikTok is definitely blowing up and you can definitely get a lot of engagement on it. Uh, it's just really hard to make like a six second video. So there's no e-commerce functionality on mm -hmm. TikTok yet, right? I mean, it's just to drive traffic to your e-commerce well, website or? I'm pretty sure they are definitely building more of that. Mm -hmm. The interesting story this year I don't see a lot of people talking about is just Shopify going around and making crazy partnerships with everybody, yeah. right? So I think they're Walmart. working something out with TikTok. They're working stuff out with all these other companies um, to kind of because everyone's scared of Amazon and everyone wants to kind of unite against Amazon and Shopify has come up and they're like, we're going to be the ones. So Shopify is cutting deals with like Pinterest and, and pretty much everyone to kind of head off Amazon, which I don't think they're going to succeed as much, <laughs> but I think Amazon is going to win no matter what, but we'll see what happens. So Mikhail is saying thank you for the slides. <clears throat> yeah. Cool. Um, what, and what about if YouTube? you guys want, send me an email. Oh, YouTube is is massive because it also works for boring products. Um, yeah. You can run Google ad or YouTube ads on your normal AdWords interface. Um, you can be very very specific with the targeting. You could target like people uh, that are viewing a specific video. Like if someone's viewing your competition you can show them specifically like your review before they watch the competitor review. Um, you can have your 
uh, display ads show up on a competitor's YouTube video. Um, and YouTube is great because that, that's where people are going to get educated about different products, right? Um, there's a, a kegerator, Edstar kegerators that are super, super big because they own like the kegerator category on, on YouTube. And this is, I think, all that they really do. They're huge now. Um, okay, what about search find buy strategy using ManyChat? In previous summits, you were highly yeah. talking about ManyChat. Yeah. Great. So ManyChat has become way more annoying. Uh, so I'm less reliable on it because now you have like the 24 hour rule. You can't really message people like a month later and be like, hey, what's up? And so I prefer stuff like an actual email list now because I own the customers and I can message them whenever I want. Um, you can also do something like SMS, um, SMS with mini chats. So you get them on Facebook first and then you email and then you uh, message them through text. But mini chat has kind of been nuked a little bit by a lot of the Facebook changes and it's more complicated. You need to add all these message tags. The rules are, are quite complex and this happens to everything over time. Okay. Whenever something new comes out, it's less regulated. And because of that, you can really smash it and go really hard. And then because people go really hard, they're going to regulate it and it's not going to be as useful as it usually is. So we see this with TikTok right now or with uh, live streaming in a couple of years, those things are going to have more and more rules about what you can and cannot do or say or, or whatever. And this is going to make things more difficult. So when something new comes out, you got to use it, go really hard. And then you know it's not going to last forever for anything. I mean, think about people running pop-up ads. Now it's not quite you know, as easy or push notifications that used to show up. I had to teach my mom how to turn those off. The only people that use or that see the push notification browser in-app push and stuff are old people because they don't know how to turn it off. Um, so if you're selling to old people, that stuff works great. Uh, so okay, Yelcha. So yeah, do you send any direct traffic to Amazon listings or landing page then to Amazon? So it depends. Like if people are searching specifically for Amazon and my, my product or something, I'm probably going to send them to Amazon because that's where they want to go. Or I want to have it like a more Amazon focused lander that's going to direct them to Amazon. If they're not specifically searching for Amazon, I want to send them to a landing page that's going to give them the option to buy on Amazon, but also to buy with me because you have a certain percentage of people that just don't want to support Amazon and I'm with them. But then you have uh, people that are like, I pay for Prime, I want my free shipping, I want whatever, I want to buy it on Amazon. So you want to give everyone the option. But the thing is, is you need to track it. Okay, you need to use Google Tag Manager and you need to see, because if you have that button there, like buy on Amazon and like 1% of people click it, then why you have it, you know, take it out. Um, also, if you have a button where you have it to buy yourself or to buy on Amazon and 3% of people buy with you, 97% of people buy with Amazon, then you only want to keep the Amazon one. You just need to track it and see what people actually like better for your product and for the traffic that you are sending. Cool. Awesome. Okay, guys, so any more questions? Any more last questions for Zach before we sign off? Oh, and if you guys have more questions, come join my Facebook group. Um, I think it's seller.deals. You'll find it in there. Megla can share it with you guys. Um, but yeah, I'm down to answer any question. You can also email me at Zach at amzkungfu.com, Z-A-C-K. Um, I cannot guarantee I will answer emails within like a one week period. I have like 10,000 missed messages on all my stuff, but I'll do my best. So that's the website, right? Seller.deals. Yep. And we also have virtual events. So they're kind of like this, um, except you guys will also be on the chat. Um, it's like a bunch of small chat rooms with like eight people each and talking about different topics for Amazon. We have people from all over the world join. We have people from the US join, from India join, from China join, um, and it's a lot of fun. So I'm hosting one of these tomorrow at about 8 p.m. China time. It's called the Pandalee Pappy Hour. 
the link is right there on Seller Deals. It says Virtual Events. So if you just click that and register, um, see you there. Okay, so Gabriela is saying thank you, Zach. <laughs> awesome. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay, Zach. Well, thank you so much for your time today and um, mm -hmm. for sharing all of this uh, great information. I'm sure people found it very useful. So, yeah, thank you very much. And it was all right. good seeing you. And I see that you're wearing your red trademark Global Sources Summit red T-shirt. <laughs> I mean, not yep. T-shirt, but shirt. <laughs> people know if I'm wearing red, it's speech day. So. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Okay. All take right. care, Zach. See Global Bye -bye. Sources. Okay, so with that, we come to the end of this session of Global Sources Virtual Summit. Now for paid attendees, we're going to be back at 6 p.m. Hong Kong time, and we're going to be talking about selling on Amazon. Then we have a session on Brexit. And we're also going to be having a PPC panel discussion that is hosted by Danny McMillan. And we're going to be talking about how smaller companies can compete with bigger brands when it comes to Amazon PPC. We also have a PPC masterclass that Ritu Java is going to be doing. And then finally, we're going to end off the Global Sources Virtual Summit with a panel discussion that is titled Crystal Ball 2021, What's Next for E-Commerce? And that panel discussion is going to be streamed live on uh, Global Sources Facebook and LinkedIn, um, as well as YouTube. Uh, pages. So if you want to join the summit, there's still time to do that. I'm going to display the URL and the code once more. So um, head over to globalsources.com forward slash summit, sign up for the summit. You can get all of the replays of the previous sessions. And you can also join our upcoming China sourcing workshop. This is a six hour workshop that is being conducted by Stephen Selikoff. Um, use the code win 2021 for 10% off. Okay, thank you very much for joining us today and we will see you later. Bye-bye.